Hello, my wonderful students. This is Mrs. Darmody, and we have already, um, I've already shown you how to make a simple game using Scratch. Now we're going to continue, and we're going to learn how to make a game that's a bit more advanced. Um, so what we'll be doing is we'll be going inside the simple game, and we're going to save as a copy. So the copy is going to be called Simple Game Part 2. Or actually, I'll call it Advanced. And I'm going to save it. And we're going to be adding to this game. Um, we have already set up the score to be starting at zero. And every time the robot touches the star, it plays the sound collect, and then the score goes up by one. But we want to make this a bit more complex because it, it does do different things, but we want to make it more complex. So what could happen if the robot touched an asteroid or a rock? So we're going to add that in. We're going to go here. We're going to look for a sprite that's a rock. And sure enough, here is one right here. Um, we don't want it to be quite that large. Maybe at 50% of its regular size. <clears throat> and we can make it move around randomly, very much like the um, star. But maybe we'll have it start out over here. Um, so we're going to copy this. We click on it, Control C, go to the rock, Control V to copy it, and we're going to, this is, star is moving around a little bit on the crazy side. We want, might want to make that every three seconds. Nope, two is probably good. So we're going to save that. Now let's see what happens. Okay, so the rock is going much too quickly. Uh, one second. Okay, that's good. And the star should be one second as well. And now we need to say, well, if the <coughs> robot touches the um, rock, uh, the rock that the score will go down. So we need our if then conditional loop. And we're going to get the sensing block just like we had before. And this time if it's touching um, the rocks, then we want to change the score by a negative one. So we're going to change the score, not my variable, by a negative 1. And what we need to do is put that inside of the forever loop because otherwise it won't know when to take this action. So we'll just put it right inside, right beneath the other if-then conditional loop. So now, as you can see, we have the score set to zero. If it touches the star, it plays collect. The score goes up. If it touches the rocks, the score goes down. And I think we have another sound in there. That, yes, the computer beep. So we'll have the sound from the, for the computer beep play if it touches the other one. So now let's see how this works. Okay, as you can see, 
I'm not too good at this game. Now another thing we want to add into this is that we want something to happen if the score reaches 10. So what we can do is we can say that if the score reaches 10, then the backdrop is going to change. So <clears throat> we'll say, let's see. So right now we have here, and we'll say wait until, which would be under here, wait until um, we have to go down to the operators score wait until the score equals 10 and then switch the backdrop to galaxy. And then we could also say a leveling up. So I can make my own variable, a very, uh, I'm sorry, make my own sprite. And we could say we want text and we want mm, pixel. And we'll say, <clears throat> time to, oh, I don't want purple. Black. Um, time to level up. And we'll make that a little bit bigger. Oops, <laughs> not quite that big. We'll move this over here. And we'll have that hide in the beginning. Maybe we should make that white. It'd be easier to see it. Um, red. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So we want it to be red and we want it to hmm. There we go. Have that show up. And we want that to show so in the beginning, we want it to hide. And then when the backdrop switches to Galaxy, we want it to show. Okay, so now let's see how this is going to go. There we go. And it levels up 
to the next level. And there we go. And I can change this back to 10, of course, because I was just trying to show you how that works.